unboxing today. Uh, this is the insect incense critic out of character and out of uniform here just kind of talking to you as to why there may be a week or two delay between uh, episodes 1, 2, and 3 and the rest of the series here. You see, uh, maybe like uh, three-fourths of the way through the year last year, I uh, started having vertigo. And since most of the uh, issues with vertigo are transient, usually it has to do with these little tubes in your inner ear and the uh, crystals inside them kind of get clogged. So I kind of figured that it would just kind of go away. Turns out that I had some sort of infection which caused inflammation, uh, which um, got my nerves all out of whack and caused nerve damage up there. But the MRI didn't show anything and the doctor said it was inconclusive. So I may have intermittent vertigo throughout my life. And uh, sometimes it's so bad it just breaks my concentration. So I thought I'd sit here and uh, tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, first and second episodes, they're going to be a little less smooth than I would have wanted. And I might go ahead and re-record them eventually, or at least remake them, and uh, probably won't replace them sort of a nostalgic thing with me and at least to show the progress of my skill with uh, this sort of thing. But uh, what I've been doing recently is um, been watching my personal garden which I use to make some of my stuff like <clears throat> Got a special kind of smudge stick here. Uh, I call it uh, laminate style or laminated smudge sticks. I'll get to a demo of this eventually. Um, I think I'd like to do a couple product line reviews before I get to this, but uh, this is uh, one of the things I do for my company, uh, Trails Rest LLC, under my brand name Earthstar Mists. And uh, I've been watching my plants carefully and uh, <clears throat> careful not to harm the plants too much when uh, I harvest the leaves. This here on the outside is white sage and hummingbird sage. Inside is Cleveland sage and purple sage to uh, closely related small leaf sage varieties. and. Um, been watching with some excitement because I had originally intended to make Artemisia as well as Salvia smudge sticks. Uh, Salvia is the sage family and Artemisia is actually a really complicated family with a huge variety of variation from wormwood to smudge stick. Sorry. <laughs> Wormwood to sagebrush, got mugwort in there. Um, uh, in addition, there's also tarragon. So that's kind of cool too. Uh, <clears throat> it's all very fascinating and they're all kind of intertwined. In fact, uh, like all this month, I've been uh, dealing with uh, multiple varieties of Artemisia kind of in my professional life. I think it started in December, actually, where <coughs> I've been studying this stuff for years. So, um, I'm finally putting it all to good use, and my buddy who owns the Hummingbird and the Honeybee, which is this awesome little bookshop that replaced the, uh, the Akashic Bookshop and Center, it's essentially the same place, it changed ownership, and the new owner, who happens to be a friend of mine, uh, thought that a rename would uh, help her out and give her tribute to some of the animals that really inspired her in her life. Anyway, 
Uh, she also has some pretty interesting plants that she grows around her house, and one of them happens to be an Artemisia family plant. She didn't really know what it was, and her description didn't ring any bells for me either. But uh, since I was selling her smudge sticks, she was interested to see if you could do something with hers. The problem with a lot of these uh, plants, especially the very thin leaf plants that sometimes you encounter, uh, I don't know, fennel, California sagebrush, some others, uh, <clears throat> is they sort of, sort of shrivel and some of them, especially California sagebrush and fennel, which evolved in very similar habitats, they're rather drought resistant and they will wither before they dry. And so this stuff that she had was withering and molding before it could dry. So I'm not sure what it is, uh, but my home is mold resistant and I've never had a mold problem when I'm drying herbs, even before I got the... you can't see it. Uh, behind these big old barrels of Yerba Santa is a uh, food dehydrator which I use to rapidly dry my herbs and my <clears throat> my incense gems and other things too. Before I even got that I did never had a problem so um, I offered to dry her up a sample of whatever she had and she brought it in. I couldn't identify it initially either but I noticed that it smelled familiar. It actually smells quite a bit like California sagebrush and um, I had to dig around online uh, from multiple reference sources in order to really nail down what it was. Wormwood. It was Artemisia absinthium and it smells beautiful, it dried up all right, <coughs> um, you know, it, uh, it has that very, uh, very thin lobed leaf uh, that separates a lot like California sagebrush, um, but it, it smelled beautiful and, well, wormwood is known for its thujone content, so I was kind of positing that maybe there's an aromatic profile to Thujo. And I'm, I'm still working on uh, finding things to support that theory because you can also find it in junipers, in the hipponymous western red cedar, whose family name is the inspiration for the name of the Thujo chemical. And uh, Right now I'm in the process of getting my hands on some of some of the Western Red Cedar so I can play with it. <clears throat> it's supposed to have great medicinal value in the vein of Incense Cedar, which is my personal favorite combination anti-inflammatory and analgesic. It is a fantastic painkiller and um, not even a little addictive and I <clears throat> I sometimes use my trail spray which has a lot of incense cedar botanicals in it and I spray my arms because I've got bad tendonitis and it helps makes me feel better <clears throat> but Thujon uh, can be found in western red cedar some junipers and also certain members, or actually a lot of members of the Artemisia family, you can find at least trace amounts of Thujone in. I could be wrong on the most part, but around here it's uh, pretty well known. I, I, I have my doubts about the silver wormwood, which is also called white sagebrush in California. And, uh, <clears throat> it, 
that's a pretty cool plant. And I'll get to that. I, I'm planning to do a second series. I mean, well, the Earth Star Review is already kind of two series in itself, but uh, <clears throat> I'm planning on doing one. I'm thinking of calling it uh, Growing on You based on uh, a suggestion from one of my friends from World of Warcraft uh, <clears throat> about plants that are readily available from stores like herbs you know uh, here we go yeah this is cilantro and I don't know about you but whenever I buy cilantro they're gonna give me like several ounces of it and I only need like a a, a small handful for whatever I'm cooking so I and this, uh, like for two bucks, I got a pound. And I had no idea what I was going to do with it, so I decided to dry it out and bind it up like a smudge stick. And I'll get to this on Growing On You. In addition, though, it'll uh, highlight certain areas and the medicinal plants in those areas. I might um, do it by month, maybe. I'm not really sure the uh, <clears throat> the uniform I'm using for that is just going to be casual, kind of outdoorsy. Uh, I wear boots; they're the most comfortable shoes I own, and I wear them everywhere. But I'll be probably wear boots and jeans. Maybe get rid of the table, or somehow make it visible that you can tell I'm wearing like a red shirt and some jeans and relax my accent quite a bit <clears throat> and uh, I'll go over what you can use these for what the government might feel how the government might feel about that and um, what to watch out for and sort of <clears throat> what you shouldn't do with it and what you should do with it that sort of thing and I'll, I'll go through several plants and uh, I'll do my best to do some more of the exotic ones, but that might, yeah, might have to wait for. So, but, uh, oh, right. I noted the uh, very similar s aromatic profiles of California sagebrush and wormwood. And a little, a little after noticing the similarity, I noticed that there was a friend of, a friend of the owner of the hummingbird and the honeybee, uh, who has been playing with the concept of uh, making a cologne or perfume out of California sagebrush. It's a very, it's a very distinct flavor out here. Uh, I, ca I call aromatic profiles flavors for short. Not to not to be too confusing, but that's just what I call them. Uh, so it's very distinct, and uh, sage scrub covers so much of Southern California that if you're a rancher, if you're a farm boy or girl, she's not a boy. <clears throat> And in my case, I'm a Boy Scout, and up at Camp Three Falls in the Los Padres range, California sagebrush might grow in more abundance than big sagebrush, Artemisia tridentata, or our, and I believe there's some Artemisia nova up there too, but uh, it is a predominant feature of the landscape and in the summer you can smell it and it smells beautiful. I can't blame her for trying, but she finally found somebody to distill a hydrosol, a sort of um, <clears throat> a crude, I wouldn't say crude extraction, but it's a precursor for uh, the essential oil and in fact um, the essential oil of uh, Artemisia californica may be so hydrophobic or uh, water soluble that there just aren't significant amounts of it that separate out of the hydrosol. 
So she decided to take the hydrosol, bottle it direct 